What's up, guys? In this podcast, we talk about the New York meetup, how trading is going, and what we're looking forward to in the coming months ahead. So stick around, listen up, because you're not going to want to miss this one. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours podcast. Uh, today, it's just Harry and I, uh, so we're going to be catching up. Uh, just been a little while since it was just the two of us. Yeah. Um, so I kind of want to start this off uh, by talking about the meetup that we had. So we just had a, a small MIC meetup in New York. Uh, we also did one in London, um, which was cool. So it was like the same day. So like the London group and the New York uh, group were kind of like chit-chatting and like kind of having a little healthy competition back and forth about who was drinking and all that. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you for everyone that came. It was such a good time. Um, I think it's really cool that we were all able to meet up like that. And like, you know, the, the beauty of MIC is that we're, we talk every day. Like same with like like Harry and I, like we talk every day, yeah. all of us. And it's like, so we've all become such close friends, but we always forget that it's on the internet. So it's like, it's hard sometimes because we don't see each other like that frequently. So any chance you get to meet up like that, like that was like the, that was like one of the big meanings of MIC being started was traders being like a family and like being able to meet and network. And it was just really cool to see the people that I interact with daily, like in person. Um, so it was a lot of fun and I, you know, I, I know MIC is going to try to do them a lot going forward and, uh, it was awesome. Harry and I have still yet to meet actually in, in person. We, yeah. we talk more than I talk to Harry more than I talk to most of my friends and it's like, it's just know, bizarre, right? but it should have came out to fucking Utah, bro. I know the, it, it always, I always have bad luck with the annuals cause it's always around the time where it's like something always happens. Like I, sw- I got to knock on wood for this coming year. Cause it's like, it's always something, bro. So hopefully yeah. this year we'll all get together. And now with COVID kind of like gone, you know, it'd be nice that traveling will be easier. Maybe I'll come up to Canada, even though I just saw those like pictures of uh, people still getting denied from coming like to the U.S. by not being vaxxed or whatever. Yeah. But it, we'll see. We'll see. It, well, it seems... I'm fucking back, so I can always come down to the U.S. Just busy time for me right now, November, December, shit like that. Oh, dude, I know. End of year stuff sucks, but whatever, yeah. man, it's nice. And, and like I said, it's like it's really cool to have a community. And for anyone who's watching who's not part of MIC, um, it's definitely something that makes trading way better is like knowing that you have other people that you're going through it with and like especially in the market right now where small caps are tough i mean just having people to vent about it to and like talk with is a huge help so you know i mean in in speaking of small caps in general you know harry how is your how's your trading lately been going in small caps uh pretty non-existent to be honest um i think for me right now during this time like i'm not like switching away from strategies but like i kind of am uh you know just because like if there's nothing to long like in order really to like successfully long in small caps um there's kind of two things you can do number one is like you kind of like know the agenda through the filings or like whatever like that another way that you can kind of go around it is um you know there's a lot of volume on a ticker it's kind of a trappy name um you know you can kind of start reading the price action and kind of trade based on that but in order to do that second thing you really need volume in the tickers and you need a lot of it yep. and for me there hasn't really been that much volume so i mean i had a conversation a really good conversation probably like i guess it was like last friday with alex where i was like bro like this shit is non-existent we're in such a slow market like what the fuck do i do like have you ever like been there and alex was just like yeah bro it's normal just take a week off if you need it take you know you know do whatever um actually he suggested that i go on fucking vacation but i would talk to my girlfriend i was like yeah like can we go down to like aruba right now like do you think we could do that and she was like he's like baby i'm in my midterms for my master (laughs) Like, Fuck your yeah. and so i don't want to go like without my girl so like i just was like yeah, right. yeah, yeah. all yeah, right it's funny, we'll, like... we'll just chill around here you know oh uh, it was actually good like yeah. i had some like doctor's appointments and shit like that this week so good um yeah, but yeah good. um yeah it's just been pretty slow like pretty non-existent i've still been talking to a lot of people though like even the, uh, as i haven't really been as active trading like in the past like week or so <laughs> You know, you still get a lot of DMs from members, like asking, like kind of what to do, what not to do. Um, so you still have that kind of community aspect, which is nice because there's been a lot of people, yeah, you know, talking to me saying like, "Hey, Harry, like, bro, like, there isn't really much to long." And I'm like, "Yeah, man, I know, you know." But it's nice, like, like you said, um, 
just to be able to kind of like communicate and stuff like that. So I've been talking to a couple of of my other friends who have been kind of like swing trading, who have been kind of uh, trading like mid caps and large caps, you know, just not necessarily saying uh, I'm switching from a small cap long to a mid yeah. cap or this long. It's just saying like, okay, like what other strategies can I learn during this slow period? How can I get better during this slow period? Um, how can I kind of uh, just, you know, put another tool in my toolbox you know right now i may have a wrench and a hammer but maybe i need a screwdriver and a fucking measuring tape in order to yeah. be able to successfully fucking go to work every day right yeah. and so that's what i've been kind of looking at um you know when the small caps are kind of like start getting a bit better again and austin had a couple really good webinars about this on just like things to look for like day twos you know finally holding up again when's the last time we saw a day two stock hold up again Jesus. on the next day yeah. when's, when's the last time we saw that like like yeah. never like in so yeah. long like you can't even remember that so those are you know it's when that you know day two gap up first bounce long was like super super in play all the time in covid right now we never see that play anymore so it's just for me i'm just kind of taking it easy i'm i'm not putting too much pressure on myself i'm not amping that expectation up i'm just kind of chilling i'm sitting back talking to some of my other friends who are because like i do have friends that are still trading right now yeah. and so it's nice to kind of go back talk to them and say hey like what are you looking at for this what are you looking at for that you know maybe start looking at some other ideas um for me it's all very interesting to me so i love learning from other people who are successful in other aspects of trading and just you know you know just learning and kind of like seeing it rub off on you is pretty fucking cool it is um, cool so what what are what have you been fucking doing with training, bro? Man, it's been what is today? Wednesday, Wednesday, October what twenty fifth or something like that, dude. I haven't like placed the trade um in like oh, over a week now, and it seems like every week that I do trade, it's like one trade, right? And like for so for like my stuff, and look, I've been fortunate that lately the one trade that pops up generally will be a good one, um, but it's not it's not like it's making up for all the missed time kind of thing, you know? And it's like right now the, pro the problem is just, just like you said, there's no range. And like, so what I do for shorting is like, I like to, to take a little bit bigger piece of a move and it's just, there's no, there's nothing there. Even if a stock is gapping up 30 or 40%, it's almost like the, the meat of the move is very small. Like if a stock gaps from like one to two, but really like the support level is like 150 and it just bounces around 70. Like there's just not enough like, range to get a good like risk reward trade so for me that's fine i'm just sitting here waiting like i would much rather not burn mental capital yeah um and i and not burn physical capital you know i think a lot of people what i'm noticing um you know in mic people post their charts and i'm i'm noticing a lot of people like burning mental capital and like i say and capital capital because it's like they're just still trying to do things that work during a hot market. Yeah. Um, especially like, like, like we we're talking with like longs right now is like, I feel like a lot of longs are like trying for these DWAP traps when like, there's just nothing there. There's like, yeah. there's almost no one to trap anymore on either side. Um, you know, it's like shorts, you know, and then the same thing with shorts, it's like shorts, you know, just shorting like the smallest pop when the, the bottom's in and we're not that far. And it's just like, guys, it's like at the end of the day, like this really isn't that great of a market to be trying that stuff. So I'll just sit on my hands. Like same thing. I'm doing a lot of just answering members and like, I feel like answering DMS and talking to people and making videos could, keeps us like, it's almost like we're in the off season right now. Like as, as athletes, right. It's like, we're in the off season. So like, we're just practicing, staying on top of things, um, keeping ourselves, keeping like the, the hinges loose and all that stuff. So that way when the market does change and it will, but when it does, we'll be kind of ready to go and not just exhausted. I think, I think I lag blew up a large portion of traders. And I think a lot of people might be taking some time off right now. Um, that stock ran from five to 12 the other day. And a lot of people just literally blew up their accounts. So I think there's just a lack of volume all over. I think the overall market is kind of uh, at a point too where there's just not that many people participating in small caps. So all we can do is just sit around and wait. Um, for anyone who's new though, like these are good times for you because you're able to watch market action as slow as it is, and you know at least still learn price action a little bit. You're able to watch videos. Um, you know people have recorded screens over over the time where you can go back and watch theirs. Like don't waste days when it's slow. Like take advantage of these days and like because they, once the market gets hot, you're not gonna want to like put in the extra time like you're not gonna have the time it'll be busy 
So while it's slow like this, that's when you guys really need to take advantage and like actually, you know, put in that extra, extra level of work and, and go from there. But, you know, don't just keep trying random bullshit right now. Like, especially like you need to sit there and realize like, am I gambling right now? Am I trying to do something that doesn't work or is this an actual setup? And most of the time it's probably not an actual setup. So, um, yeah, it's tough right now, man. Anyone who says it's not is, is lying, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and I also think that, like, probably, like, the biggest growth from us, like, because we kind of, like, came up in MIC, like, together, is definitely um, not, like, going hard every day. Like, we're pretty content right now to kind of sit back, whereas I think a lot of people are still in that COVID mindset or still in other mindsets, whereas, like, I feel like from us, like, we're so content right now to just sit back, chill, you know, it's like, how can yeah. I make a recap video when there's nothing fucking there's going nothing, on, yeah. you know, like, yeah. it's really like, uh, kind of time right now where it's just, okay, I'm going to sit back, chill. I'm not going to go too hard. I'm not going to, uh, burn all that mental capital so that when the good markets come back, when I'm feeling a little bit better, you know, we're going to go balls to the wall. Yeah. And I think your last good trade was like Armed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Dude, that, yeah, it was. That was like And that was like week. that kind of like ATM gap up yeah. dilution type setup. Yeah. Which was like pretty good one for you. Um, yeah, I saw that and I was like, fuck, if these boys don't nail this, like I don't know what the fuck I'm looking for. Um, well that's like so, one trade in the last like, you know, yeah. I don't know if that was eleven days ago or something like that, you know. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, right. you know, venture out on new things, look at whatever. Um, if you don't want to learn anything new, don't burn yourself out. Like we were talking about this chart last night. It was a long chart. I'm not going to say the member by name, but you know, the guy was chasing every single green candle, selling the bottom, chasing every single green candle, selling the bottom. Like that type of trading may have worked in a hot market. And you can tell that this trader was like reviewing charts when it was in a hot market. Like, you know, yeah. like he saw that rip. He's like, oh, this should keep going. This yeah. should keep going. But the problem is, is that in these market conditions, that won't work. Like if you're along and you're not buying support, then, you know, yeah. you're going to be in trouble. Like, and it's same thing if you're shorting weakness, right? If you're yeah. shorting those support levels, hoping for an offering, hoping for a breakdown, you might have, you might get a bit more lucky, to be honest, if you're a short yeah. seller in this market. But yeah, um, j- just chasing all around is like not good habits. So when you're chasing in these types of markets, in my opinion, it just builds bad habits because once you get to a hot market and you're chasing everything, you're not going to know what the fuck to trade. You're not going to know what to do. You're going to be all over the place. Your mental capital is going to be burned out. You're not going to yep. even like be prepared or ready or know how to attack or what to do or this or that. And so that's why, in my opinion, I think really it's just a good idea to not chase, sit on your hands, wait, don't go too crazy, uh, and just really kind of, uh, you know, just take that type of mindset. That's why in like the discipline workshop, like um, I'm so much more like proud and like really happy for the people that like post the discipline win um, with no trades. Because I think if you're able to teach yourself that now, you will be in such good shape by the time the market heats up. It's like, I always relate like trading back to like golf or something, right? It's like, so in golf, like when you practice, like the the habits that you build during practice are what matter during the matches. So like, you know, when you're teaching yourself good, um, good grips, good stance, good posture, like everything in your swing that translates into your game. And I feel like right now for all traders, we're in that practice mode where we're just, we're building good habits. So by the time the actual matches come along, we'll be in much better shape. I just, th- I also, you know, it's just, it's tough right now, guys. And I, I hate seeing people get disappointed. And it's like, it's like, this is the reality of this career though. Um, you know, for anyone who's starting now, I understand the frustration, but like reality is we just came off of like 2019, 2020 and 2021 were like three really good trading years. Right. So like technically you made enough in those three years that could last you for five years for most people. So it's like, or even more. So like, you know, we know people, for example, Harry and I know people who made tens to hundreds of millions of dollars. And, and now, you know, and that was just in a couple of years. And now what, one slow six months, three months, you're like crying about it just doesn't make sense. So, you know, that, that's just it guys. And, and the, and to be honest, it's everyone, you want to talk about large cap traders, small cap, there's, 
there's just not that many setups for all traders right now. So it's just, it is what it is. You know, I, I just, I have a friend who's um, brother-in-law's in a hedge fund and we were just chatting the other day and, you know, he's so slow right now. And this guy, this guy has a, uh, like a hundred million dollar book. Like he trades, like, you know, he's a big trader. He's slow as hell and he's slightly down on the year. And it's like, this is a guy who's made tens of millions of dollars and he's slightly down on the year and it's okay. Like it's okay to do that. It's just yeah. never okay to like blow capital, you know? And, and some, a piece of advice I actually got um, recently from someone we were just chatting. He was talking to another trader actually. And I just, I really like the idea. Like if you're someone like who uses like a risk, like number, like if you're someone who risks like 1% of their account, right? So that means on a day in day out basis, you're risking 1%. So if you have a $50,000 account, you're risking $500. A lot of guys right now, what they're doing is they're cutting their account mentally in half so that the way they're only risking their half risk usually so that way they're still able to trade even though they're not not sub they're not optimal setups i don't think that's a bad idea for people who can't literally control themselves or people who still have setups that they're just not working um you know i for me i'd rather just sit around and wait i don't mind getting caught up but it's always a good little tip and i actually thought it was not a bad idea yeah yeah no i think so too and I mean, for me, it's like if the market stays like this and small caps stay like this for you, then I'm going to venture out into other things, you know? Yeah. My on, but, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking tiring right now. <laughs> you know, I'm going to venture out into other things. I will just go to trading uh, mid caps. I will go back yeah. to trading large caps as spy, uh, the Qs. And that's yeah. what I'll do because, um, you know, if we're going to be stuck here in this type of slow market environment, you know, I'll just go do something else, you know? Yeah. And it, like, if you had have talked to me, like, maybe, like, two years ago and told me that we were in, in this type of time, you would probably hear me say, oh, well, I'm not going to leave small caps. I'm not going to leave small yeah. caps. I'm not going to leave. But, you know, it's not like I'm necessarily leaving. It's just I am looking at other things. I'm keeping an eye yeah. on other things. I'm keeping an eye on other setups. I'm, you know, just... I. I think it's cool to have like eyes everywhere, you know, where yeah. if your market's slow, okay, well, let's take a look at some, you know, mid large caps. Let's see what have like, you know, on some higher kind of liquidity names. Let's kind of check it out, you know? Yeah. And let's see if we can kind of get some ideas going, right? If there's no ideas going there, you know, there is always going to be stocks moving. Just it may not be your yeah. market. And right now it doesn't seem to be our market. Although with Bitcoin starting to kind of creep up, rally again, maybe that could bring some speculation back. Maybe it can bring some yeah. people back. But, you know, the reality is, is that if we are headed to a recession, if we are headed to a depression, if we are headed to some fucking hard times, you know, the only thing that is going to really be kind of bouncing around will be those kind of uh, large cap names because people don't have money to yeah. put into small caps. And if that is yep. the case, that's fine. But you know, you shouldn't freak out about it. You just need to kind of go with the flow in trading. And I'm done kind of burning my mental capital. I'm happy to be here all the time, but I'm not going to be, you know, stressing out myself to make 10 to 20 cents. You know, the range on yep. the stocks is 10 to 20 cents. And then after zombie hour, we go up another five cents yep. after the, you know, at, you know, uh, after hours, we're going up 20. It's just like, I, I don't yep. want to be here all day watching myself get chopped up for 10 cents, watching myself yep. get chopped up for 20 cents, you know? And then I see people kind of chasing these big green candles or chasing these little rips. And it's like, bro, you can't be doing that. The, that yep. in a range bound market, like you, it's called, it's like Bow's channel trading, you know, do, 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 do. Like that's kind of what it is, yep. right? That's the type of situation we're in, you know, love it or hate it. This is where we are. Yeah. So, you know, you yeah. got to keep getting it is what it is. Gotta keep adapting. Yep, it is what it is. And I think no matter what, you know, we, at the end of it, things will change. And it's just like, it's it's funny. It's like, you know how we get that black swan like eye lag and it wiped out a lot of guys? I think this market's going to wipe out a lot of guys too because people just can't stop oversizing, can't stop trying to make up for lost money that they have. And like, at the end of the day, that it is what it is. But, you know, I mean, we'll keep kind of recapping small caps every every week when we do the podcast. and And hopefully... You know, you guys will see the progression. You know, you'll yeah. see as we start like dipping our toes kind of back into trading more and more and and we'll go from there. But not to change it up, but what do you think about the uh large cap market right now? You think we're going up, you think we're going down? What do you think? Um, I think right now it's <laughs> very much a coin toss. 
Although the thing is what the what the large cap market does not have going for it is that uh, we have Apple earnings coming out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Apple so. has significantly slowed production down. Apple currently is the most index stock yep. in the fucking, you know, in the whole market. Yep. Every index has Apple. And so we've already heard that they've cut production. Uh, production costs have gone up. Um, some of like the euro is, you know, completely bad. So European yep. sales are, you know, yep. not the greatest. Um, and uh, I guess like they get some things from Europe. I don't really know. I was reading about it just briefly, yeah. but you know that was not really the best. I guess um, you know there, it's just costs more money to make iPhones. People have less money. The price is going up. Uh, it seems to me there isn't really that much of a demand for this iPhone. It seems to me like when I talk to everyone, like you even talk to Bao, yeah, who literally buys the latest phone yeah. that comes out. Like literally, you know that guy. I swear to God, every year he's like, "Woo, baby, got my new iPhone." Yeah, you know, yeah. on his Instagram story or whatever. Yeah. Like, and and right now, like. I was like, you know, we were just talking and I was like, yo, so you're going to get that new iPhone or what? And he's like, no, nah, like, I just don't see the urgency to go out and buy a new phone yeah. right now. Right. It, so when you Apple's see funny. someone like that, I know, you not know, nah, go out and buy the new iPhone. I'm like, fuck, production sales are slowing, bro. I know. It's funny though. It's like with the app, with companies like Apple, because like Apple is my favorite stock in the, uh, in large caps, but it's funny. It's like, until like what Alex you say like until I walk outside and don't see people staring at an iPhone like I'll always kind of love that that company and like you know the other day I went to the Apple store I was buying uh, an Apple Watch and like it's just crazy how busy that fucking store is though like how always busy it is dude there's always lines so it's like Apple's done a good job of creating like a commodity that is like necessary like the iPhone unfortunately nowadays is necessary ninety percent of my clients use Apple Pay now when they're paying they're like boop and it's just like everything's so simple and it's like. You know, long term, sure. I think we're. I think everyone knows where we're headed. And as far as like a, we're we're in a recession. I hate that anyone will even kind of think we're not. Um, I think I think we're all kind of uh, blind to it because I think in nicer areas, like where I live in Boston, you know, you go to New York, everything's so busy. So like the like the the upper middle class or like the anyone in the wealthier percentage of of people are doing just fine. They're still spending money. Um, but I think there's that lower to middle class that are hurting. Um. And I think that we're we're deep in it now. And and I think that as far as like the actual market goes, like I think Apple's gonna probably I'm guessing Apple's gonna miss earnings and it's gonna be a little shitty. And if the market holds, I think we're gonna fucking rally until the, at least the midterms. And I think that they're gonna keep things kind of rallying until to try to get if they need votes in. They need people on better spirits to go vote because if everything keeps tanking, dude, there's gonna be a huge change. Uh, come midterms and and that's just not it's not what the uh the White House wants right now. So we, we also have uh GDP numbers coming out yeah. on it well tomorrow as well. Yep. Yeah. So we yeah, have it's... Apple earnings, we have GDP, and if you remember the real fucking textbook definition of a recession is one negative consecutive quarter of yeah, GDP. Multiple. Yep. And Dude, it's, so oof. if we have another negative GDP quarter, they'll change the bad Apple <laughs> earnings, like plus an administration, to be honest, from what I've seen, that does not really care about the market at all. You know, they may want it to rally in the midterms, but from what I have seen, like how much can we fucking rally to save these people? Like, I don't know, man. True, man. It's just, I feel like we're losing the inflation battle. Like, I feel like, I feel like what everything they're doing, like they crush the economy and they crush the stock market and somehow inflation printed higher. And it's like, that's not good. Right. And like, we're very lucky, like that the dollar right now has been like strong here. Yeah. And I think that's the only reason that inflation isn't so bad in America, because like when you go outside of America, inflation's fucking 30 to 80%. You know, and it's because the dollars just, it, that's how it works. And it's like, so we'll see, man. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I think no matter what, I still feel like cash for most people is probably the best position you could be in, um, you know, because we just don't, we don't know. Um, you know, most people that most, like guys, I have a few clients that are analysts and stuff and, and like JP Morgan, those companies. And and they say like, they feel like we're going to rally into, for a couple months until people really wake up and see like we're in a, a deep recession once it starts creeping into the middle class more. Um, 
then it'll fucking happen. But it's just, man, it's tough. It's this is where we're at. So whatever, we'll keep we'll keep kind of documenting this as we go. Um, you know, next week hopefully we'll have some news based on on everything coming out like the next couple of days. So so we'll recap it then. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of kind of uh, market news. Like it's very volatile right now. Um, yeah. Best case scenario would be Bitcoin rip to fucking 30K, everything rip. Yeah. Um, worst case scenario, bad earnings we, come out, bad GDP <laughs> numbers come out, and we dial back down to the lows, and uh, we pick ourselves up again in the next bear market bounce, and that's about it. But, I mean, yeah, you know, it's just, we're just in a situation right now where um, you have the bottom 1%. Who are, but I think now, even what I, from what I've seen, is that, uh, that the like for I don't know where to like how much does it cost for a block of cheese where you live? Like, do you know? Do you, do you buy cheese? Do you grocery shop that much? Or? Man, dude, dude in, in general, groceries have gone up like 10x here. Like, Possibly like you bu- ten dollars yeah. here for one block of cheese. Yeah, it's it's like that for everything, dude. Here, like if you go uh, buy this like, like eggs. yeah, I eat out every night. Like, yeah, I don't, pretty fucking, much. I don't, I don't buy dude, any cheese. I stand by the Chipotle economics that it's cheaper to buy Chipotle every night for dinner than it is the fucking grocery shop right now, which is psychotic to say. But dude, I go to the grocery store and I live in the Chief James here teaching us Chipotle dude, economics. C- CMG baby, that's that is Chipotle economics because it is. Uh, it's at the point where, like, if I go buy an individual meal at a grocery store, I'm gonna pay like twenty dollars for like nothing good, dude. It's just like you know, a little bit of chicken, a little bit of some like fruits and yeah. veggies and shit, dude. Fuck it, like it's just it's gotten to that point for most people, and it's like I it stand by the economics where I'm fat right now, so I need <laughs> to eat healthy. So I'd rather spend twenty dollars more so I don't fucking blow up like Frosty the Snowman <laughs> for Christmas. But it is, it is. It is rough right now. Hairy like, economics right there. The hair economics. Dude, it's everybody though. It's like I talk to friends all the time, dude. People are people are struggling to save. And it's just we're at we've gotten we've hit that point where it's like, well, people yeah. don't have the extra money to gamble. Yeah, I don't want to say gamble, but that's really what it is. They don't want to gamble on small yeah. caps. They don't want to do anything. People are it's a it is we're entering a depressing state. But yeah, I don't know. We we will figure it out. Not the markets, nothing's gonna change until we get news. Nothing's gonna yeah. get better until we get a major news, like whether it's the war in Ukraine ending or coming to resolve like a resolve. That it's- fucking shit's never gonna come to a resolve a resolution, no. bro. I don't, I don't think so either. The Ukrainians, in my opinion, do not want peace. They do not want peace, man. That dude is literally just taking money. I'm sure they could come up with some type of negotiation right now with Russia. They're just taking money left, right, and center. They're milking the cow for all it's fucking worth. And, you know, I think we're in a situation where if we wanted to achieve peace in Ukraine, it could happen. But it starts with the Ukrainians also saying, okay, I want to achieve peace, which they don't. Yeah. So I understand the whole situation. I get it. But, you know, for all of us, who are kind of living out here, um, you know, it's good for us to see some sort of peace resolution. I think, you know, yeah. that, oh, yeah. that's the best, that's the best case scenario. Yeah. You know, I think so everybody wants time peace, man. For what I think is to go to the negotiating table and have a serious fucking talk about peace instead of escalating, escalating, escalating. Let's work yeah. on some de-escalation. Let's work on, uh, you know, being diplomatic about this. Uh, not yeah. hurting insults anymore. Let's talk about, you know, some real peace talks instead of, yeah. you know, nuclear uh, talks. And yeah, instead of war talks, escalation every day, you know, right yeah. now, in my opinion, I think Ukraine has the most power over Russia. The entire world is backing Ukraine. So it's up to Ukraine to say, okay, I want peace. You know, let's start some talks yeah. because Russia has already said that they, uh, would do some peace talks and Ukraine yeah. does not have it at all. Right. So it is both sides. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying the Russians did an amazing fucking job because like what they did was it's, bad, but it's time to get some fucking peace talks going. It's time to end yeah. this war and it'd be good for the entire world, you know? Yeah. Cause the market, nothing's going to change until we get a new something that's either, either it's as, either it's inflation printing really low, like a lot lower than what it is or the war ending or something like that like we're just nothing's going to change so that's not going to happen. Yeah, everything right now and that's kind of and I think that a lot of people are starting to realize that. So 
you know, it's going to be very interesting heading into yeah. November and, and seeing how people vote and all that stuff. So whatever. I know, I know we've been doing this for a while. It's probably a good time to wrap it up, but yeah. you know, like as usual, anything you guys want to hear, please message us, DM us. Um, I know some people were asking for some talks about like lifestyle and we can always do that. Give us some ideas. Um, and we will be back uh, next week. Yeah, my lifestyle is not too much right now. Just yes. sitting at the computer, chilling, uh, go out for the occasional Dom Perignon, wake up, yeah. hung over, and do it all over again the next <laughs> fucking morning. It's not a bad lifestyle, man, but thank you guys. Appreciate it as always. All right. See you guys. Peace. Nice one.